I guess we're live. <laughs> Welcome to Wednesday night. So glad you could join me for the live stream tonight. It is a beautiful Wednesday here where I'm at. Put a foot of snow on the ground and it's uh, very cold. But other than that, one thumb up. If you're jumping in the chat, make sure you let me know where you're from, say hi. And at any time, if you have a question about kitchen design, make sure that you put it in there. And at some point, hopefully we will get to it in a little bit later. So jump on uh, the thumbs up button when you come in. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. Tonight, we're going to chat a little bit about uh, the history of kitchens. Uh, I've got a bunch of different pictures and stuff to look at and just talk about how kitchens have basically evolved um, over the history of the world, I guess. We do have a, po uh, not a post uh, poll, but a uh, quiz that we're going to try to do tonight. Found a quiz. It's a little different than what we normally do, but it does have to do with the kitchen. Nonetheless, we'll have a little fun with that and um, we'll get into it. So before we do the quiz, though, I just want to say hi to Terry Joe. Bluebell 1920, Jackie's here, and Lauren. So thank you so for saying hi in the chat. And um, Jackie is our moderator still. She's doing a great job, and she's just climbing the corporate ladder of the moderation world, I guess. Uh, so thanks, Jackie, for being here uh, all the time to to do that for me. I really do appreciate you and uh, your willingness to do that. And I appreciate everyone who's jumping on to say hi. So um, I got to say, I've been super busy this past little while this past week since I returned from from vacation uh super busy with clients and online design so it's been really great um and uh but one of the one of the issues I'm coming up with is the amount of time I have to devote to creating content which can become you know I have so many hours in the day I don't want to be sitting in front of a computer all day long uh, long enough as it is now so um Hopefully tonight will be half decent and I can give you something uh, good to uh, to think about. I think the most value from a live stream, in my opinion, isn't even the content that I bring, but it's the opportunity to chat about different questions and ideas that we have. Uh, I think that's where the most value comes. So I do try to talk about something, but if you do have questions or you want to run ideas or uh, ask the people who are here watching their opinion, uh, please do so because this is a great um, a great platform for that. Even if we don't have the answers or I don't have the answers because I certainly don't have all of them, uh, but I have some. And so hopefully we can share that. Um, all right, let's jump on. I see someone chirping here about gas stoves. It's Phil. Phil, you're chirping about gas stoves. Hope you get a gas stove before they get banned. Is that something that's happening? Is that something that's happening? Someone let me know. Are gas stoves being banned? Darlene loves her gas stove. Stove. <laughs> I'm tired. Darlene got her gas stove, and it's amazing. Um, oh, yeah. You know, I forgot to mention. I'll jump into this in a minute. Um, I forgot to mention. I just got a text come through. What's this all about? Uh Cool. Um, Santa Claus was on the live stream before Christmas. I, I forgot about that. I hope... Um, I hope you enjoyed his uh, visit. <laughs> that was, uh, I heard he did a great job. So anyway, we'll go from there. Oh, what's this? Yeah, they're being, they're banning gas stoves from being purchased. Hmm. Is that something in the U.S.? Is it Canada? Is it everywhere? What's, uh, is it state to state or province to province? I wonder what the deal is with that. Hey, glad to be here tonight. I'm glad you're here too. Um, awesome. From Ontario. Awesome. Thanks so much for being on. Fellow Canadian. I love it. Appreciate it. Oh, here we go. Uh, it's a political talking point being grabbed by the U.S. right wing based upon a recent study about the dangers of gas stoves, sto stoves, <laughs> and being, the ban is being discussed. Well, oh, what's mom saying? I read that gas stove concern in the post today. It's everywhere. How come the kitchen guy doesn't know anything about the gas stove ban? My head's in the sand. Someone has to fill me in. Let, next time you find out something, uh, please let me know. Phil, I thought you had my back. Why didn't you email me or do something? Um, anyway, I'm going to have to look into this. That make good content. That would make a good video on gas stoves. So thank you. I'm going to write this down. Gas stoves being banned. And uh, banned. All right. We'll go from there. 
All right, we've got to figure this out. Oh, I read some of the California was switching over to all electric going forward. Hmm. The right wing is against it. The right wing, the left wing. Oh, my gas dive stove is sitting in on my dining room floor next to my dishwasher. And the, well, then coming into the uh, FBI showing up. This is the first time I heard it. I heard it too much. Sorry, I'm not sure what you meant on that one. Okay, Jeff loves his induction, so if you have that, those aren't being banned, I don't think. There's no talk of that. Terry Joe has the induction, so that's good. Themes may cause asthma. Yeah, I wonder about that. That's interesting. I mean, yeah. it's being discussed in California for sure. The pros rule would be no new purchase of gas stoves, but those in place can remain the same. So that's OMG. I hope it turns out to be grandfathered in, which sounds like it will be, because I just installed one, and I love it. Well, you know... There you go. I, I guess there's a real concern there. I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I'm going to find out what's the, what the deal is, and we're going to we're going to we're going to make some waves here in the kitchen community. <laughs> Headline in uh, from the Washington Post: How the humble gas stove became the latest flashpoint in the culture wars. Wow, who knew? I didn't know. How can you all know? And I don't know this stuff because I'm too busy. Like editing a YouTube video, I guess. Hopefully it makes homes with gas stoves more valuable. Yeah, maybe. All right. Help us out. Everyone is getting unnecessarily worked up over the whole gas stove thing. It's about improving air quality, or inside air quality since using gas stoves creates hazardous byproducts. Matthew's telling us just calm down. It's going to be okay. We're all going to survive. Barbara, consider a gas line. I have induction for the next owner. Pass on that. Given the trend away from gas, it can be harmful, especially people with asthma and breathing indoors. <laughs> I clearly don't read. <laughs> I actually don't read the news. I don't watch the news. I have. I don't have any idea what's going on. Um, it. It. I don't. I just don't. So, anyway. A good hood with an FCFM uh, and makeup air system solves the gas stove problem. <sighs> Here we go. It's not right or left wing. Don't buy into the culture war. Yeah, interesting how things go. Gloria, you've gotten us. Uh, you've got to let us know how you like. Gloria, you've got to let us know how you like your induction stove. I have electric and it cooks evenly. Well, anytime I hear uh, the name Gloria, I just think of Madagascar, the movie. Anyway. <laughs> All right, this is great, people. I love this conversation. This is why I show up. I don't know why you show up. I have really, sometimes I really don't know why I show up, but I show up for this stuff because uh, this is really fascinating. And this makes, a, this makes great content for me to be able to go and research this stuff and maybe produce a video on it. Thanks to you. And thanks for bringing this up. So, Keep, keep them coming. We're going to look at uh, kitchens from the past now, look at kitchens uh, as they evolved through time. We'll talk a little bit about it. I'm certainly, this isn't an exhaustive thing and my timeline could be all messed up, but I just think it's interesting to look at some of the older pictures of kitchens from way, way back and to see, you know, what, what has evolved, what has changed um, in, in the kitchen. This And what has stayed the same? What are the things that have kept, you know, current that that never go out of style i guess and and there is one particular thing that you we're already talking about it that uh, just doesn't go out of style uh, in terms of what's useful in the kitchen and uh, whether or not your kitchen is caveman prehistoric or it's super ultra modern 22nd century um whenever that will be uh, it, there's you still need to have certain elements of function in that kitchen and so Let's just start with this one. This is the first element that I want to in introduce tonight. Um, this is basically the first kitchen, or what I picture the first kitchen to look like, because this is what it's all about. Uh, harmful gases causing you asthma, <laughs> apparently. But it's all about cooking, and that's, that's completely... Uh, the point of, of kitchens, at least in, well, from what I can tell, and maybe my opinion. So 
if you look at this, this is a very functional kitchen. It does everything that a kitchen needs to do. It cooks your food. And um, after that, everything else is kind of add on things that have happened over the years to make it more convenient for all the other things that we do. So we can combine them all into this one room that we love so dearly called the kitchen. And this is, um, you know, obviously not an ancient picture or depiction, but this would be what the very first kitchen uh, would have been all about. Just a fire and a stick and a fish or something um, on, on a fire. And so as we look through these pictures, this would be the one thing that remains consistent is that there is all, all the kitchen revolves around this. So the center of the kitchen is the range, the stove, the cooker, the oven, the hub, the whatever you want to call it. And then after that, as time moves on, it progresses. But this seems to be the, the center of the kitchen. And today it's no different. You know, we just cook supper tonight and we cooked supper. So that talks about the whole idea that it's around a stove or something that can cook for you. All right. <laughs> Thanks for noticing, Ellen. Thanks for being here. Uh, the land of Oz. Oh, wouldn't I love it? All right, here's, uh, let's look at a couple more of these and we'll keep going. Uh, let me just scroll back, actually. Oh, wait, no, let me just, let me do this. Sorry, folks, as I ruin my slides. So here's another primitive kitchen here. Let's have a look at this one. Now, again, I don't know if this is a, 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 a stock photo that I, I stole, obviously, apparently by accident. But this is an outdoor kitchen at its finest. And, you know, I don't know what era or century this would have been from me. This probably is obviously a modern picture uh, depicting this. You know, if you go to any of those history places, we have one called the Fortress of Lewisburg and uh, other, other historical places. Um, you know, they have these kind of setups where you can walk through and look what it looks like in, in, in history. So, but again, it's centered around the stove, this uh, cooker, no, there's no stove there, but just a, a place to get heat and a place to, to cook food. And they've got a couple different places to hang here and these contraptions to cook things in. Of course, as time went on and as history uh, went about, um, we, uh, we, we invented pans and pots, you know, the Egyptians and uh, the Greeks, they invented clay pots and things to put stuff in and things to, to cook items in instead of just sticking a stick through them and uh, just cook them open style. This was a way for us to be able to, to cook uh, differently. So interesting. I don't know how, uh, you know, culturally co correct or historically correct this uh, setup is, but um, I can imagine it's, it's, it's pretty good. Her, her outfit looks looks a little bit too pristine for it to be actually a thing. Oh, there goes my camera, of course. Hopefully tonight my camera will not buzz out on me like it did before. Um, and I have to switch to that horrible FaceTime view. Okay, let's go to the next one. And this is another just depiction of maybe medieval time uh, when kitchens were, I don't know what, what period this exactly would be. But, you know, it looks like one of those... His, Places you can visit and look through all the different things. You know, get the, this pot hanging there and some utensils hanging on the wall. Um, fancy chairs and whatnot, bowls and dishes and all that kind of stuff. So, again, not much here in terms of, you know, the modern kitchen. That didn't come to much later. But we see that there's these places to hang things and places to cook and multiple things to hang. And, and look at this contraption where you can lower it. Uh, I don't know if you – hopefully you can see that. But you can – you can lower the, the thing in the middle with the little pot hanging on it. It has these notches in it. And look at that. It's, it's pretty cool. So you, you go and, you, you know, you'd have the the uh, metal guy. What do they call those guys who bang metal with? In the, what are they called? Yeah, the iron guy. He would make this little contraption. But it's pretty interesting. You can raise and lower that depending on the height you want it over your fire. Um, what, what's the name of those guys? They, they beat metal with hammers. Someone help me out. blacksmith i think is the name completely left me so uh yeah the blacksmith thank you everyone um anyway you went to the blacksmith and you made this really cool contraption i i mean i think that's amazing because you, you'd be thinking like i gotta figure out a way to get this thing to go up and down better so there you go no quartz countertops there no no quartz countertops um who knows what they would have had probably just wood i guess or maybe some stone 
let's see what this next one is another kind of medieval looking type of thing here with the, the fire again hanging with some kind of contraption again to raise and lower it on that chain in the center there and it has a spit here that you can turn for so i think that's a spit of some type yeah it's got a little crank on it there you can turn that i, I love looking at these things because this is like a kitchen and you know i mean i don't know how i would have gone about designing something like this but so interesting to look at some of these things i think uh obviously it's a big like fireplace kind of deal here um yeah so you get your your pots some pots and pans and things to cook on your, your little spit and these contraptions and, and chains for hanging things so really interesting and and um i'm not sure what this box is with the circular hole in it again that's probably for wood uh, you know wood to go in there's a little like ventilation on the side for air and they got a pan on the top so really cool um i like it so this is just another uh another example of you know the history of where kitchens have come from and and looking back this is what it's all about so cooking food and so so cool um i love looking at this stuff it's interesting i hope you don't mind let's go to this one. Oh, i want that one uh, this is an artistic uh, representation of something like what we just seen but this has the table of course involved and um you know things hanging food hanging places to uh to, to hang utensils they got this little little fire pit to the right it looks like a i'm not sure what that would be for but it look maybe it's for wood storage i'm not sure and then of course uh your fire going there with your pots hanging over it. and that's so cool to uh, to see yeah it looks like it's rid of architectural digest uh i don't know where this one came from i'm exactly but interesting picture I bet I could go on right now and uh, have some AI art generator draw me up something. In fact, maybe I will um, before the night's out. I've been doing a lot of AI stuff lately. It's very interesting. So this is very cool. Um, the, the range hood just made of, well, it's not a range hood. It's just your stove, uh, uh, you know, your wood stove, you're not your wood stove, but your, your chimney basically um, there. And there'd be a, some kind of flu maybe inside there. Ah, oh, so neat. <laughs> Gammy picked up on the open shelves. Yeah. Well, there you go, right? So they've been around for a long, long time. So when we talk about trends, we kind of can laugh a little bit and think, really? Is that an OTR? <laughs> I think it is. OTR up here. Over the range. There was probably an over the range rat in, in, in this case. Where's the OTR? <laughs> yeah, and then this is an open space uh, as well. So open open kitchen, beautiful floors. I love it. So again, artistic representation. Uh, this was a this is a <laughs> this was a joke, but this was a caveman a caveman um, uh, kitchen. But it's just a kitchen in a cave, obviously. No caveman had all this fancy stuff, but yeah, this, I thought this was neat. This was just for fun, but it's a kitchen in a cave. Um, and and uh, even this kitchen in the cave, this modern kitchen in a cave uh, has a range there. So very cool. Uh, the next one was another kitchen in a cave. And uh, um, this looks more like, I, I don't know where this would be, but I thought this was funny. This was a caveman kitchen. So you think they're out hunting buffalo and whatnot. And uh, yeah, they come into this. They actually have a running running water and scissors hanging there so but even this old kitchen whatever it is and wherever it is um it's got all i'm sure there's a, a stove there somewhere that has all the things look at the ice tray cubes the cubed ice trays that's funny anyway that was just for a joke there's the original kitchen now we move on to uh something that's more uh this would still be pre-industrial revolution this would be uh, i guess maybe in the renaissance age i'm not really sure of this picture i hope you can see that okay but uh, the thing that I, I, I picked up, or I didn't pick up on it, but the thing that was pointed out was that um, the, uh, they used to use dogs in these wheels. I don't know. I don't know. This is just what this was telling me. But they used to use dogs in these wheels to turn this, like, spit here, this rotation for this, you know, hunk of ham's leg or something. And uh, I thought, wow, that's really, <laughs> really interesting uh, for the family pet. Obviously, probably wasn't a pet, but there he is just up there spinning around my thought was does he know how fast to go like what what happens if he goes too fast he starts running too fast or he goes too slow but apparently they they put dogs up there and uh kind of 
kind of sad, really poor thing. Uh, if this was an actual thing that would happen, that's uh, maybe he loved it. I don't know. Maybe he just thought it was great, but interesting nonetheless. Again, a stove. That was kind of the main point. All these guys and Owen girls and kids are over here enjoying life. She's watching watching the ham leg and uh, the stove's stove's fired up. The the fire's going and uh, things are happening. Yeah, animal cruelty. Not not cool, but apparently it's what it was. I guess I can't verify that. I'd have to keep keep researching. Here's another one. Uh, again, more. You got to spit. They're very primitive. Uh, you know, just a you can just turn it very easily. There's nothing fancy there. Just on two stone blocks. But again, these chains are adjustable. You know, there's some clay pots and a fire. So there's very very primitive things. But all of this. <laughs> There goes your ham leg. <laughs> All this stuff uh, contributes to what we see. Now, this one's a, a little more modern. Uh, now, I don't know the era of this one, but obviously they have some wooden shelves and contraptions. And uh, But again, the stove is there. Looks like it has been used at some point. So um, doesn't look... I mean, if you thought a gas stove uh, was an issue, uh, this was probably... Um, you know, imagine the peep, the lungs of these people. Uh, wow. So, yeah, I can see that uh, being a problem. No ventilation there as far as getting the CFMs out of the house. Just pure dust and soot in your lungs. So pretty bad, but this is what you had to deal with. This is what you have. So you get the pot hanging there. Again, these contraptions, these hanging things. And, you know, life, you know, none of these people were really concerned about, I don't know how concerned they would have been about functionality overall. It probably wasn't really a thing. They obviously weren't concerned with the, the design they weren't concerned maybe they could have been concerned about the layout in terms of where things were to make it easier to get at. So I assume at some point when kitchens start to develop into even something like this, there was a thought that things, I want things to be close or easy to access. Um, you know, I'm sure they didn't think about it in terms of what a functional kitchen was, but intrinsically they would have wanted it to be functional um and so they would have made those adjustments along the way and that's that is the evolution of the kitchen how it became more and more functional over time because of the way humans and interacted in the kitchen in the space and what they needed it for so i think it's fascinating to to see how that has evolved and uh, th th i mean this one's even painted so that's pretty cool again don't know how if this is historically accurate if this is an actual uh, picture of of something but anyway very neat <laughs> yeah that's why life expectancy was with 35 years so there you go now we're getting into the more uh, industrial revolution period the 18th century i guess um things started to uh become invented uh stuff started to happen where they um you know, they have all these different trinkets and uh, it looks like some kind of meat grinder on there. Again, hanging pots and whatnot, a, a little stool. I think that was interesting to have the stool there because um, it, you were tired of peeling your potatoes and putting them in that bucket. And so you needed somewhere to sit. And so these functional things started coming into the kitchen. Again, uh, this this range, this oven, I guess, uh, right in the center of things. It wasn't until a little bit later that... Um, stoves started being put against walls uh, or they were designed to be put against walls. They had to be, have space because it was more like a, a wood stove in the middle of your home. And, um, and so here you got this beautiful, beautiful uh, wood stove oven contraption and uh, even has this ventilation with the, with the, the, the hood over. I don't know how that it would work. I don't, I doubt there'd be any electricity on that, but obviously, but, very cool to see. This guy's just chilling with his paper in the back there, waiting for his tea to boil. Oh, indoor pl plumbing hand pump. That's what Daniel's saying. Is that what that is? Indoor plumbing? They have a muffin tin there. <laughs> That's kind of cool. A muffin tin. Yeah, this is a real open concept kitchen for sure. Um, you know, I mean, this is so, so neat. Now, this one, um, obviously... Here's a good point from Susan. Uh, looking at these old kitchen points with the luxury and privilege of debating gas versus electric versus induction. Uh, very good point. 
Yeah, they weren't certainly debating this. <laughs> yeah, I know. Isn't that crazy? Even they know how to do it back then. That, that's a statement hood. That is a statement hood. That's, that whole piece is, I mean, imagine having that. These are the types of things that are coming back into style. Um, a lot of people wanting this type of thing in their kitchen nowadays as well. Um, obviously, this this unit would have been, I'm assuming, very high end by the looks of the era. And this gentleman here, he was probably not working in a mine somewhere uh, or logging, but he maybe owned the mine um, by just the looks of things. So, but very, this was in this was in Ottawa actually. This picture, so I'm not sure what the industry in Ottawa would have been in the 1800s, but very neat. Very good point. It looks very heavy. The whole thing looks in, uh, just amazingly heavy. How'd they, how'd they bring it in there? Who, who carried that in? This guy didn't do it, I guarantee you. Another good point by Jeff, that they heated the whole house with the range in the center of the house. So that's another thing. The kitchen, you know, the kitchen has always been, you know, you know the saying, uh, the kitchen is the heart of the home. Well, I don't know if this is, a, this is where the statement comes from, but it would make sense that because the warmth that the kitchen provided, you, that's where you would gather. Um, you, you're not going to be in the cellar. The cellar wasn't the heart of the home. You'd be freezing down there. Uh, so the kitchen is the heart of the home because you, you, you're warm, and that, that makes a lot of sense. Again, I'm making this up, but I'm speculating, all right? Yeah, those would have to be some very large joists. They would be. Um, Dan saying the stove weighs a ton, maybe two. I would imagine. I would imagine. So neat. But there you go. Functional kitchen. Not a lot of counter space, though. Gloria picked out the irons on top. Is that how they heated irons? I imagine maybe. It's just 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 an iron. Cool. Cool that you picked that out. Um, yeah, maybe that's how they heated irons. I just bought a new iron. <laughs> a lot of these kitchens were in the basements for a restaurant, so they had a, a, a space on the main level, very bad ventilation. In the older times before this, and some of the pictures we looked at, the kitchen was a separate room completely uh, altogether. And uh, it wasn't part of the main living area of the house most most in most cases. So, <sighs> Jackie, listen. The OTR wasn't invented yet. <laughs> it's coming. Don't worry. They need that man. They they probably had to like iron their curtains and stuff too, right? Right, let's look at the next one here. Uh, another, so this this would have been, I'm not sure the time frame compared to that other picture, but where this stove is against a the wall, there was a, I don't know exactly the year, but sometime in the later 1800s, I believe, that stoves were in manufacture in such a way that they could go against a wall. Um, and here you go, you're still, you still have wood in there, you're still firing up, she's got the muffin tins going, they look empty i don't know what this picture's all about but you have this um other little contraption over here it looks like it has burners on it uh, i can't really tell what that is but again she's got some counter space and a little open shelf got lots of open shelves open shelves seem to be the thing <laughs> only the range that's a good one only the range that was the only thing in the kitchen early 1900s okay that makes sense um so probably, uh, but yeah, you have this open, some open shells and just, there she is cooking. This looks like a real life picture. Um, not, not something that's staged, obviously, because her dress looks a little messier, which would make more sense if she's actually doing something. Uh, so neat. Hope you're liking this so far. Listen, if you're jumping on late, uh, you know, we're chatting, we're talking about kitchen stuff. Um, obviously, the history of kitchens. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you enjoy my content. Uh, please do so if you like it. If you've watched a few of my videos, uh, hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. And make sure you hit the thumbs up on this video. It's, um, I don't know what it does, but it's just a thing that we like to do inside of the live streams. Hit that like button. 
and uh, let's uh, let's do this. Let's, let's let's hit a record. Um, that would be great if you could do that. I really do appreciate it. All right, so let's move in right along. This is a little dark, so I apologize for that. But um, yeah, again, just a lot more shelving in this little kitchen here. Probably similar era, and all the pots are hanging. It's interesting, you know, the pot hanging devices, how that's like you go to Ikea and buy those things. It's something that's kind of trendy, hanging your pots. And hanging pots was just a necessity in this age. There was no, no one was doing this because they wanted, you know, you come over and be like, oh, wow, look, at your, I love your pot hangers. It was just like, yeah, yeah, I obviously I hang pots. Where else am I going to put them? Because they don't have cabinets. And uh, this particular one, again, some kind of, it looks like a, a primitive like stove or oven. I'm not sure what that was. That was in the last picture too. Maybe some of you know what that is. And I couldn't figure out, I looked up with, uh, with, with Boynton and Lakewood. So this would be like, I'm, I'm guessing like, I know Lakewood's like in Florida and Boynton maybe. Um, so I don't know if this was a particular company that made this in that age, but it looks like they have this vent hood that goes up there and uh, the kettle going, of course. But I, I just think this is so fascinating. Nobody was like probably harping on them about their open shelves. Those are gas. Okay, cool. So this is like a like a gas a gas range. Oh, that's neat. I love it. That's cool. Well, they better get rid of it because the right wings don't like that. Whoever that whoever the right wings are, I don't even know who the right wings are. <laughs> But uh, they got to get rid of that thing. Oh, wow. Open shelves in this old kitchen. Who knew? Yeah, what's old? And not just old, but very old. Very old is new again. Are those some sort of barometers on the left or clocks or something? I wonder. Good eye, Jackie. They look like pot lids. <laughs> I think there's pot lids. Maybe they're barometers. That would be something that would be useful. I have my, you know, I love checking my barometer. We got the door. <laughs> that I could tell you, there's a door. There's all kinds of fun things. When you look at these pictures, kind of, you pick them out. It's really neat. Anyway, good one. I like it. Who else think there's, they're platters? Interesting. I think they're pot lids. I don't know. Oh, made by the Boy Boy Boytonton Boyton Furnace Company, Colmwood Stoves. Sweet. Those are cool. Yeah. So that's neat. What what year was that? Can, did you know what year that was, Matthew? What year were those made? That'd be neat. Double boiler. Very neat. Lids for those pots. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. Lids. Double boiler. Yeah, that's the double boiler. Is that what that is? I don't even know. What's a double boiler? I don't know anything about kitchen stuff like that. I should know more. I could expand my channel if I knew a little bit about cooking. <laughs> Maybe. 1905-1910. Wow. That's a pretty old. That's a that's over 100 years old, that thing. Well, I mean... If it's still around, but yeah, cool. Very cool. Oh, well, this is much more modern. Now we're into, uh, I, I picked up this particular, particular picture because this is a Hoosier cabinet. Um, and this was something that became very popular uh, in the early 1900s and peaked in interest uh, not too long after that, but it's something that's becoming more popular again. So this was kind of like a bake center, obviously, uh, you know, one stop shop for all that stuff. Uh, yeah, appliance garage in there, recipes on your door, place for your canned goods. So this is kind of the culmination of wanting everything to be in one kind of section. Hoosier. Am, am I saying it? I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Is it hosier? Is it hoosier? I can't obviously ask you because I can't hear you. So if you can like help me pronounce it, that'd be great. Yeah. So, but the, uh, 
the whatever it's called cabinet here is uh is very uh very cool so look check this out this is a modern day one i'm sorry this one's a little blurry but again so this the, this this a uh, gray bluish gray toned uh thing you've likely seen something like this in kitchens you might have something like this this is kind of a modern day take on this uh ask siri oh hooser okay thanks that's I, I don't need to ask Siri. I can, I can just ask Bluebell. Hooser. It's a Hooser cabinet. What was I saying? Hosier? <laughs> I'm going to stick with my pronunciation. <laughs> a Hosier cabinet. Hosier cabinet. <laughs> oh my gosh. Where, 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 do I, where, where am I? Where do I live? My grandma had a baking station. Yeah, so it's a baking station. Um, Hoosier cabinet. Uh, again, becoming very popular. She loves hers. She's got a big smile on about this thing. This looks pretty mo like brand spanking new too. So I doubt she's actually using this. It might probably just a, a marketing photo for something because it has um, this interesting contraption for the flower. It's got this lazy Susan style thing for whatever's in, in, those, uh, in those bins there, those jars and a place for the eggs. And I guess this is a big container for flour this big silver thing is that what that would be for yeah so interesting very cool to put put your your recipes on there i don't know if that's a recipe or what is that anyway get the butter going the rolling pin piece of granite on there very cool um i lived with my grandparents in the mid-60s western australia in an 1840s timber slat hut with no windows, no electricity, and tank water, kitchen, bathroom, toilet, were all out, outhouses. Oh, wow. That is amazing. That would have been roughing it for sure. Some people think a hosier comes from asking whose ear. What? what? No, are you, I, don't think, I don't think that's correct. <laughs> I don't think anyone thought that, really. Some people think whose ear comes from asking whose ear. Why would they think that? <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, I'll take it. Maybe it's a Betty Cro... What's that? Okay. Uh, yeah, it looks like an advertisement. Definitely is an advertisement. Yeah, the silver thing is gra flower, gravity-fed fed flower. But I want to highlight the fact that this is, um, again a move towards um oh after fighting <laughs> I, it's not that i don't believe you i just thought it was funny sir oh yeah lots of severed ears in indiana yeah because it was invented or first manufactured in, in indiana okay very cool um so the the gravity fed thing, uh, just this movement toward functionality, which is so interesting. Now again, this isn't the, there'd be a, obviously in this kitchen with this hoosier cabinet, um, there would be a, a range, a stove of some type, obviously. But again, the functionality of the kitchen just coming into play and building out into these different types of cabinets where people began to say like, you know, we want to make this uh, this whole thing more functional. Probably though, even saying those words. Jackie's saying that no, it's it's from who's your daddy <laughs> folks were always curious in that part of the country about your lineage and who your folks are <laughs> oh my gosh oh wow okay i'm gonna call it a who's your daddy from now on all right jackie you got me who's your daddy cabinet <laughs> oh my so West, the flower holder would hold 50 pounds. Wow. If they were below, they also held 100 pounds of sugar. Wow. 50 pounds of flour. It's a lot of muffins, people. It's a lot of muffins. Who's your daddy? All right. Well, here's a modern who's your daddy here. Of course, we looked at that already. I think it's pretty fascinating. And, uh, okay, so we're back to, this would be, you know, Industrial Revolution area, era and beyond 1900s, somewhere around there. I don't know the exact time, but we're at, we have cabinets. We have glass doors with mullions. We have hanging racks. We have open shelves. 
We have a big basin uh, sink. Um, no, we don't see the stove or the range and, or the oven in this one, but we can see this functionality, some type of countertop that has a corner, uh, you know, thing here. Interesting how they designed that, you know, they had this little corner, corner cut in whatever this countertop is. They have, they have drawers, they have this uh, kind of small little door here. Look, notice how the cabinet doors don't match the drawers and the doors don't match like the the thing was just built to be like whatever it needed to fit and there was no rhyme or reason to it but if you look at it so to the right of the sink here this base cabinet unit just just a, a full height door and then two two drawers and then a drawer underneath and they match but then the doors underneath that they don't coincide with the thing and then this other little drawer here so the kitchen it had nothing to do with the look of it being symmetrical and looking a particular way. It was built to be functional. And so this is exactly what we need. And so this is what we're gonna gonna have. So, oh, um, Gloria saying you can see a bit of the gas still at range. You can, yeah, on the bottom corner. Good eye, people, I love it. Yeah, and Jay Nickel, flush mount. Isn't that cool? Inset, are they inset or are they flush mount? They look like they're inset. Yeah, they look like they're inset. Barrel hinges on the, on that. Man, so neat. Uh, and, and a sconce on the wall. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? There's a sconce on the wall because uh, those are coming back in the style too. Open shelves, sconces on the wall, these big, big old sinks. That's a big sink there. Let's go back to this view. Um, so built for function. Interesting how under the sink because there's faucets here. And I don't know if that's the plumbing for the faucets under the sink. Uh, I, I mentioned in a video one time, and, and I read about this, that um, a gas sconce. Interesting, yeah. They're banning those too. Um, that sinks were placed under windows because you, you, you could open the window and dump your basin of water out, your dirty water out. Um, that was the original intention of why sinks were under windows. Someone was asking me one time, why are, why do you always put a sink under a window? And it's become such a modern thing for us to do, but the sink under the window originally was for convenience of dumping water, apparently. So don't take that to the bank, but you can take it to the credit union. A hoosier or a hooser or a hooser daddy means a countrified person and being from and being from Indiana. Thank you, Google, Google search. Wow. So I wonder why they named interesting how they named things, why they called the cabinet that. A countrified person. <laughs> Jackie knows. Those dishes in the glass cabinet would, would would be your everyday dishes. The good dishes would be in a china cabinet in the dining room. Gloria knows her stuff. Yeah, look at those dishes. Yeah, pretty neat. So cool to look at. I'm sorry if I, if I stay on some of these pictures too long. I just think it's fascinating when you look at some of this stuff and how kitchens were used. And, you know, we, we sometimes complain about maybe our current state of or maybe our current kitchen, we want to do a kitchen renovation. And then we look at some of these things. It's like, wow, like they, they made do. And um, so it's really not that bad. Now I'm not saying you shouldn't get a kitchen renovation because by you, not specifically you, but some of the you of the world, if you don't want your kitchen reno renovated, then I don't have a job. So, so I say that with a grain of salt. Very cool. Let's go to the next one. This would be a little more modern still. Look at the size of that sink. Cast iron, probably porcelain, enameled, some type of sink. Um, so we're having, this is like some, you know, a lot of more artistic style. The arches, the lamps. We got a pantry in this one, finally. Um, I don't know if this is an act. I don't think this is an actual picture, right? This looks like a drawing. A representation i don't think it's maybe maybe i'm wrong but it could be maybe it's a real maybe it's an actual picture a real thing but they have they have this uh 
again, this oven, this stove here going on, gas, maybe it's gas, maybe it's wood fire. Got like two levels to it. Looks like some kind of mixing stand here, like a baking station where she's standing at. Her book's hanging there, her canisters. And then someone can tell me what this is over here. So we got the sink. This looks like another ad. Yeah, it's hard to tell on this one. I, I guess, I don't think this is a real. It just looks like it's a, I can't tell. So anyway, they've, <laughs> regardless, um, they have this uh, massive sink. And to the right of the sink is this other basin of some sort. Does anyone know what that is? What's that big basin that's there? Or did someone say it already? Well, Jeff's saying there's a drain board sink. And, and it's got an offset tap. So yeah, so the drain board would be to the right. And then... Um, all right, Susan picked out the 1930s, okay. Jackie's not a fan of the balance. Yeah, okay, so that's what I'm looking, that's what I'm asking. What's the what's to the right of that sink? Uh, that's what we want to find out. So I'm just kind of looking through your, yeah, Art Deco vibe, Matthew's saying. Maybe for washing clothes, Daniel says. Yeah, I wonder. Could be. I just had never seen one before. When I seen this picture, it kind of sparked my interest. It's the quality is not that I can tell what it is, but there's a, a stool there. So I'm thinking you'd be sitting there for like some kind of task that you need to be sitting there for an extended period of time. Um, all right. Gloria knows she seems to know what's going on. Um, it's a manual washing machine. So yeah, Daniel is saying the same thing. So and laundry. Okay. Laundry. Very cool. I love it. I love learning. I love learning new things and seeing some of this stuff because, you know, I'm just a youngin. I don't know. I don't know some of this thing. Beautiful. But overall, the kitchen is starting to take shape and starting to become something more than just a, a place to just cook. It, it's now a place to prepare. It's a place to wash. It's a place to store, becoming more and more what a modern day kitchen would look like. So. I'm guessing the late 30s due to inset arches, okay, and uh, the woman's fashion. Transition period between Art Deco influence. Yeah, it's very Art Deco look to it. Yeah, those arches are interesting. Definitely more interested in style and in, I don't know if trend is the right word, but probably that would have been more of something they would have been thinking of in this period of time. What, what, probably not the word trend, but they would want it to look a particular way, which is what being trendy is all about. That regular sink is big enough for adult baths. <laughs> Let's hope that's not what happened in there. All right, next one. So now we're into definitely the more modern kitchen here um 60s 70s i guess but uh we see this peninsula which is something kind of new and obviously there's a telephone there and she's yamming it up on the telephone Got look at kind of a cookbook thing going on there and uh amy's pet peeve there's a cabinet door open so that that's not good they gotta you gotta get that closed it's it's the OCD here for me would, wouldn't be good, right? Got to close that. But big sink and this interesting, is that like a shade? I don't know what that is. I can't tell. Obviously, this isn't a real picture. Um, looks like another ad, but interesting how they did this back wall. So you have your, your cooktop. I don't see the oven, but the oven would be somewhere. They have this cooktop happening. They got a range hood. No OTR yet, Jackie. Um and then, yeah, it's definitely more stylized, modern. They have cabinets on the back of the uh, the peninsula as well. So they're, they're thinking about function. They're thinking about storage. Um, and, uh, you know, that's kind of the way things were starting to head towards. A lot of, draw a lot of drawers on top and doors on bottom. So um, we don't see a lot of drawers underneath and obviously no pullouts. And I don't know what's in this corner, but it's probably a nightmare and I won't like it. Um, 
And then Jackie's picking out that the window shade. Yeah, it's frosted glass in the corner. Yeah, so this corner is like a frosted glass kind of detail. And over on the right, this cabinet seems to be nothing under that. Am I guessing that right? Is that like kind of just, these are like posts, these red things? So cool. Anyway. And oh, and then it looks like a curved valance over the sink. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell she's highfalutin just by the way she's on the phone there. She she's probably talking to someone called Falutin. She picked up the phone. She's like, "Hi, Falutin." Sorry, that was pretty bad. Burnt orange equals nineteen seventies. Yeah, a pass through. I wonder why would there be a pass through when there's just right next to it is just open. So I wonder what that is. But yeah, it could be a pass through, Jackie, for sure. Or they just forgot that they wanted to put frosted glass on that side. Jeff saying the same thing. It's JFK's wife. Yeah. Maybe it is. Definitely highfalutin. Highfalutin. That's, that'd be a good t-shirt for my channel. Like, highfalutin. Just remodeling my mom and dad's house. It had never been remodeled. Cool. Well, that, if it's never been remodeled and it's your mom and dad's house, um, that's pretty cool. U-shaped kitchen. Yeah. In fact, this might be, I don't know what she's sitting at. I don't know if that's a table, but it looks like the countertop is the exact same as the rest of the countertop. So it could be that this is even what they would call a C-shaped kitchen. There are G-shaped kitchens as well. And, and C-shaped kitchens uh, where it's a U-shape with a peninsula. And then there's a U-shape with a peninsula. And then the peninsula comes on a 90 degree making a G shape. Rarely ever would see those, but those are actually kitchen layout shapes. The black light fixture. What's up with the black light fixture on the right? Yeah. I think it's over supposed to be over the table back there. Maybe it's just the depth perception of the picture. I'm not sure, but yeah. She's sitting at the desk, maybe. It makes sense because there's a phone there and she got her papers. So um, could be, could be, could be, could be. So <laughs> Matthew's reading the dictionary and he's coming, he got all the words coming at us today. When did OTRs make the auspicious introduction? Early 80s? I think they were invented be, way before the 80s. Um, someone can look it up, Google it um, when they were invented. I'm sure it was before the 80s. OTRs. Oh, I'm still, th I still think, yeah, maybe the eighties. Someone look it up. I knew at one point cause I looked it up one time, but I I'm thinking microwaves were before the eighties, but the OTR. Yeah. 80 sounds about right. Someone can find out. Oh, I have this dark orange columns in my kitchen now. I just painted seven, seven years ago. Cool. Raymond. So that's interesting. So I'm wondering, is it a, um, like not a cultural thing, but like maybe certain parts of, you know, the world, the U S whatever, it's a thing and, and it's not a thing in other places. Neat. And when did cooktops come on the scene? Hey, Rachel. Thanks for being here. When did cooktops come on the scene? These are all great questions that I don't know the answer to. But we can find out. We can definitely find out. I know someone's on the scene right now. Someone's looking right now for me. So we got to find out when was the OTR. Here we go. My first, oh, first OTR. First microwave, 947. First OTR, 1967. So I was right. I, I thought it was earlier than the 80s for sure. Um, so there you go. So they're, they're quite old, the OTR. Next time someone asks me, I'll sound really smart. And Jeff's saying he had a cooktop in 1959, uh, or the house built in 1959. 
I had a cooktop. So yeah, um, there you go. <laughs> Comfort design hacks. Stay for the history lesson. Well, it's something different for sure. Something fun. I think I love looking at these. Let's look at the next one. Oh yeah, this is <laughs> this is more of the the eighties and nineties kitchen. More the nineties kitchen, late eighties, nineties kitchen. Um, probably even into the early two thousands. So this would have been a kitchen. This would I would have renovated so many of this style of kitchen with the natural oak, the balance over the window, um, with the you know crown molding only going up to 84 inches and then ceiling to, you know, rest space to the ceiling. These corner garages were popular with the timbre doors. The white ceramic knobs were popular. The arch door, the, the cathedral doors are really popular. So this was definitely the style. Now you can see there's more drawers in this. Um, I probably can bet there's a lazy Susan in that corner. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> hard pass <laughs> no thank you funny thing is is that not the door style but definitely not the color but oak is definitely becoming very very popular again interesting how the kitchens of old that we looked at no one had a problem with but as soon as we look at this uh we're like hard pass googly eye kitchen <laughs> this looks like my aunt's kitchen apparently in Halifax. that's not good so you, they should probably get get that taken care of. Um, <laughs> so, like, I guess the kitchens of the '90s were just the worst for some reason. Framed cabinet, barrel style hinges, uh, center style, you know, just standard framed cabinets. Still, we see a lot of that today. Interesting how these cabinets have center rails. This their styles, whatever. This one doesn't. These doors are flush together for some reason. So. Interesting how and why they did that. There must be something in there that might pull out. That'd be a good thing. But uh, laminate countertop with a laminate edge, just a bolt, like a, like a applied edge. And this would have been what they call a flat lay countertop. Um, this would be plywood with a sheet of, of arborite or whatever. Um, <laughs> hate it. <laughs> What's with the racing stripes? <laughs> it's interesting how like this kitchen everybody kind of liked, which this looks so super modern compared to this kitchen. Like, what were we thinking in the '90s, people? Right? What's going on? This is the ceramic. Okay, <laughs> ceramic cat and bunnies on the counter. I think those are chickens. Ceramic chickens. Um, I'm, I'm going to stick up for those. I think those are awesome. <laughs> I, that's the only part of, of this I like. Those ceramic chickens uh, that you find at like, you know, the the thrift shop. Oh my gosh. Is it a cat and a bunny? On the countertop? That's chickens. Uh, that's chickens, people. It's like two, it's two chickens. It's a black chicken and a white chicken. I can see their little gibbly goblet thing there. <laughs> A drop in porcelain sink. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, look, curtains on, on the, on the window, single hung windows. Very nice. But, uh, oh, renovated so many, so many of those hundred percent chickens. Thank you. <laughs> so nice. They're, oh, they're hens. Okay. Technically they're hens. Yes, they are. They're beautiful little laying hens. So much appreciate. So much appreciation in old kitchens. Our kitchen in progress is in addition to our 1939 bungalow. Wow. I'm determined for it not to look like a new kitchen in a brand new edition. Oh, that's cool. Well, then you're not going to like the next picture that I'm going to show. Uh, but yeah, there's something to designing a kitchen to fit in with the, you know, the house and the, the era of the home. That That's uh, a lot of people like to do that. Of course, they're chickens. Freaking nineties. The past was the worst. Oh, maybe it's just because for me, like this would have been the kid. I mean, I grew up in the eighties, right? So and the nineties, but I was a kid in the eighties, and so I would have seen like, um, you know, my the 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 house that I grew up in. I can't really recall what this what the kitchen um, door style would have been like. I don't remember. Um, but then in the house that my parents built,
built, my dad built the cabinets. I think they were mahogany, maybe. They can let me know they're on. Or some kind of cedar. Uh, and then they upgraded eventually to a thermal plastic, a white thermal, and then again to a maple after that. So, um, but yeah, this is, this is just gross. All right, let's go. Oak is back though. Yeah, I just heard, I just seen it. A bread cabinet. So that's, yeah, it, it could have been for bread or an appliance garage. I think at one point it was a bread cabinet, a bread box. Um, that's, I remember that designing those actually at still at one point. Um, and then um, they kind of converged into hiding appliances as well. This would have been, yeah, some kind of red oak. Gross. Oak is back for sure. I love all the comments tonight. I really appreciate it. It makes this whole thing just that much more interesting. <laughs> And the white pulls against the orange oak. What's what? You don't like that? What's wrong with you? It looks amazing. The chooks is that what they're? Is that what you call them? The chooks do match the tiles. There's no who's your daddy in this kitchen though, unfortunately. Uh, okay, yeah, cedar. So, yeah, they had a, they had cedar cabinets that were built, and those were quite nice. Um, uh, homemade so they didn't have this type of style door to them um, but yeah this was a very oh, very common so here here you have the ultra modern this is where, this is where we're at today uh, maybe not this ultra modern but this is kind of where we're going this is what's kind of becoming trendy interesting that this kitchen and oops and this kitchen look very similar check them in i mean other than the fact that it's just a nicer picture um this is very ultra modern uh flat panel doors inset flat panel doors it looks like i'm trying to figure out what these black things are these like hooks or something i'm not quite sure what that is to be honest with you and this is a rendering too by the way this isn't an actual kitchen this is definitely a rendering but very nice overhang uh, islands. Interesting to note, it wasn't until quite recently, I think. I don't know the exact date. I don't know if this is, you know, historically accurate. But it didn't seem to be until recently that islands became kind of a real thing. Um, and again, with the range in the center, this range here with, with the um, with the cooktop, probably they have the wall ovens. Um, islands became a thing. But... Oh, all of these things, the, the one thing they all had was a place to cook your food, which was the whole point of having a kitchen was just uh, somewhere to cook your food. And then as we see this progression of functionality uh, and storage and just places to, you know, countertop space and bigger sinks and separating the ovens and the, and the gas stoves and the whatever and the induction and all that kind of stuff, just how things have progressed from just you know, a stick with a fish over some open, open flames. It's mind boggling, boggling. So I can only imagine like, what will the kitchen turn into in the future? What's the next 50 years of kitchen design going to look like? What, what's, what's it going to be like uh, in the future? What's that going to be? And we don't know, but it's interesting to think about where it came from and its iterations over the years. So I can only assume that the, some things that will stay consistent in, in the kitchen, no matter when or where it goes to, um, is that there'll be a place to cook your food, obviously. And it seems like there's going to be open shelves in there. And maybe that's another video I can do. The, the proof that open shelves are going to just be are, are timeless, a timeless trend, you know, because I get people on me about white kitchens. and But it turns out that timeless trend is really an open shelf. So there you go. So all those people can, you know, deal with it. I'm gonna make a video on that. I gotta, so I gotta make a bit video on this gas ban because um, that's a that's something we gotta figure out, and if that's something we should be considering um, as a problem. Those look like those look like wine bottles in a cabinet with holes. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't. Maybe, maybe it's you know what? Bang! You you nailed it. That is what it is, I bet you. It's a wine rack. It's a circular wine rack. 
Randall, that's that's amazing. Thank you. I do think that's what it is too. Now that I'm looking at it, and yeah, how inconvenient <laughs> of a place. Uh, that's totally what they are. Cool. Thank you for that. Good eye. Oh, I bet the OTR will come back. I bet it won't. I bet it will never come back. Uh, un unless you're in Jackie's place. If you're in Jackie's house, she's got the best OTR on the market. So other than that, no. Yeah, the range is back in the middle. Interesting enough. Uh, I get that request a lot, actually, from people to put the, the range in the center. So center oven, center like it was back in the old days. But we just didn't really, we probably didn't even know it. How do you like a range? How do you like the range on the island? Um. You know, my, my parents had a range in a peninsula, which is basically an island, and they, they liked it. It was never an issue. I don't have a problem with it. I just think that a kitchen should be workable for you, the homeowner. And so if it works in that space and there's ample space behind it and beside it for landing area, uh, and then you're not sitting on the back of it or anything like that, and you have proper ventilation, I think it's good. Do I like it there? Not Probably not for me personally. Um, I don't like anything on an island. I just want a flat surface with nothing on it, uh, just completely for prep or whatever. Um, but I don't think there's an, a problem with it overall. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's a bad idea. Basketball loves the sink on the island. A lot of people love sinks and islands as well. Again, not my thing, but you know, we all got to get the kitchen that we we want let's do a quiz and then we'll wrap this up we're, we're an hour in so this is great if you're watching me at this point for whatever reason and you have not subscribed i would ask you to do so if you enjoy my content if you've watched videos in the past of mine and you like them uh please subscribe so you can be notified uh, when we have live streams which is every wednesday and uh, videos every saturday and other random things that happen but um this is so cool I prefer the sink on the island. Oh, no, I read that one. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, well, that's, I mean, you got to take all those things in consideration. Whether you like, you got to think about the splatter. That's a real issue. Um, I prefer mine against against the wall. Uh, so. Okay. Yes, Helen. We have to hit the thumbs up. Where are we at? 38. We're good. We're doing good. So if everyone... If every one of you hit the thumbs up, I do appreciate it. And if you didn't, hmm, what's wrong? Let's go to uh, let's go to this quiz. So I can share my screen. Let me find it. All right, this is from Bra Bra Brangle. I don't know. This is not a. This is a more of a like cooking quiz, but it's kitchen trivia. So I thought it'd be fun for us. We'll end the night on this. Um, and then we'll, um, I'll say goodbye after we go through this, but I don't even know how many questions there are. <laughs> I only read a couple of these and I don't know anything. So this will be complete guesses from most of this. Okay. A breakfast question, a croissant owes its crescent shape to the sickle emblem on the Turkish flag. I'm going to say that's true. I have no idea why I'm saying that, but. I'm just going to say it's true. It sounds like something that could be true. And I, I'm only guessing. I don't know the Turkish flag either, so maybe there's not even a sickle on that. But anyway, I like saying the word croissant. True or false, butterscotch and caramel are the same thing going by different names. Yes. I'm going to say that's true as well. I don't want to tell you why I think that, but... There was this place, uh, I can't even say it. I don't want to tell you where, why I think that. But there's a place with, that was nicknamed Butterscotch something and the Caramel something. And, be, and they had to, it had two nicknames. And uh, so maybe that's why. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> if my parents are on, they'll know what I'm talking about. Um, okay, a pinch uh, and a dash... Good old Tabasco sauce. All right, so many facts, so many myths. Which answer below is actually true? Okay, I hope you can see this. I'll read it. A special cookbook was printed during the Vietnam War describing how Tabasco sauce could be used to improve this, the taste of sea rations. 
only saw from Avery Island in Iberia Parish, Louisiana, has ever been used to make Tabasco sauce. I don't think that's true. The British Parliament briefly banned the purchase of Tabasco sauce in 1932. Oh, a ban. As they must be right wing as part of the Buy British campaign. Uh, I don't know about that or all the above. Oh, no, I hate all the above things. Ah, uh, shoot. Okay. Some, a, a bunch of you are saying all the above. Crud. All right, I'm going with it. You're probably right. I obviously don't know. Food safety. Not sure how long those eggs have been in your fridge. Oh, that's a question. Not sure how long those eggs have been in your fridge. Not sure if they're still good. How can you tell without cracking one and checking for that nasty rotten egg smell? Okay, I should know this. Okay, let's see. Hold it in front of a bright light. If it's solid, it's bad. Okay. Put it in a glass of water, and if it floats, it ba it's bad. Incubate it. If something hatches, it's definitely not to use for your cake. Well, yes, obviously. And freeze it and then shake it in the insides. If the insides slosh around, it's bad. I think it's the glass of water thing because I think I remember seeing things like that. And you guys are confirming that. It's B. Yeah, the water thing. I remember seeing something like that. Okay, we're going with it. Goofy dessert facts. Microwaving jello will turn it back into liquid. Ooh. Hmm. I don't. Do you think so? I don't know. Jackie's saying true. I can't. I can't even tell. When's the last time you've had you've had Jello? Like, who eats Jello anymore? Just pure sugar. You're all saying water. Okay, you think it's true? Jackie thinks it's true. I'm gonna go with true. Oh, I don't know. Really? I would think it would just like get. I don't know what it would do. I don't know if that's true. If your own personal eternal happiness was riding on making a proper tiramisu, what would you do? Sit in a corner in despair, wishing you spent more time watching cooking shows on TV. Yes. Make a soft bun dough, like in cinnamon buns. Braid it, bake it, top it with lemon frosting and colored sugar. You guys are going to have to help me out on this one. I don't even know what tiramisu really is. Make a short pie crust using more nuts than flour, filling with either custard or jam, building it up to three layers and laying on lattice work top crust. That sounds like just a pie. How is this a quiz? I don't know, Jackie. It just is. I'm going to get a grade at the end. Dip sponge cake or lady fingers in liquor, liquor and layer that with custard and, with, and grated chocolate. Number four? Number two, the cake thing. What? I have no idea. Okay, lady fingers. We got a lady fingers. We're going to go with that one. So lady fingers. Is... What are lady fingers? Even Ikea furniture comes with, a, with clear instructions. instructions. When, a re, when a pie recipe includes a step that calls for you to bake blind, what do you do? Laugh it off. Go ahead and bake with your eyes wide open. Poke holes in the crust. Fill it with dry rice, cover it with tin foil and bake it. Separate egg whites and yolk and use only the whites for pie crust. That sounds like the most correct thing so far. And add flour by feel until the pie, oh. I'm just going with this one. That sounds like the most accurate thing. Go by feel, baking blind. I could be wrong, but I think, I think I'm right. Unless I'm absolutely wrong. Brown bag in it. The sandwich owes its name to Old English language and wick, meaning and place. No, I think it just means putting it in a paper bag. Is there anything that says that? New Old English word for sandwich. Oh, the sandwich owns its name too. Oh, sandwich referring to sand place and sandwiches were originally enjoyed by picnickers at the beach. John Montagu, fourth Earl of Sandwich. <laughs> I just going with John Montagu. The fourth Earl of Sandwich. That's got to be right. Face it. How many questions? Oh, there's only a few left. How thoroughly seared your steak is matches touch points of your own face. What? Okay. Choose the correct doneness to touch point pairs, pairs from the choices below. Play, 
play with you. What the heck? Medium equals chin below your whip, lip. Well equals forehead. Rare equals tip of the nose. Rare equals forehead. Medium equals tip of your nose. Well equals chin above the lip. Well equals tip of your nose. Rare equals chin. What, what does this have to do with anything? I'm just randomly guessing. Nobody knows this, right? Rare equals forehead. That's so bizarre. No, rare wouldn't equal your forehead. Well done would equal your forehead. Medium your chin. Rare the tip of your nose. Let's go with that one. A chef's hat and traditional. I can't wait to submit these answers. A chef's hat, the traditional tall pleated cloth like mark of true chef. Of a true chef. Where did it come from? Some chefs just have a lot of hair, hence the one size fits all solution. Beanies with propellers on top would just be silly, a mix of necessity. Keeping hair out of food uh, and style. Uh, thanks for making stove fight style popular, Abe. And chefs of old used to hide in monasteries and wore clothes that described them. I'm just going to go with the monk one. I have no idea. This is just, this is a brutal one, but let's see how I did. All right. You're just this. Wait, no, what? Okay, question one. Okay, cool. Uh, the breakfast question. The croissant. I uh, got, okay, from the Turkish one, correct. Oh, butterscotch and caramel are not the same thing. Oh, okay, well, I didn't know that. I'm not going to read all these answers. We're just going to look through the answers, see how we did. So that's uh, that's one one wrong, one right. Uh, okay, so Tabasco sauce. Oh, yeah, you guys were right. Uh, all the above, thank you very much. Oh, 70.9% of people also answered correctly. Oh, we got this one. Yeah, the corrected floats. Only 71% got that correct, the egg thing. Hey, okay, goofy dessert facts. Oh, Jack, you got it. All right, turn back into water. Uh, if your own personal eternal happiness. Okay, the ladyfinger question was correct. I'm surprised a lot of people know that too. Question seven. Even IKEA furniture. Oh, it's not. Poke a hole in the pie crust, fill it with dry rice, and cover it with tin foil and bake. Well, there you go. I would have just baked by feel. And of course, brown bag in it. Yeah, I knew there was a fourth Earl of Sandwich, John Montague, you silly goose. Face it. Okay. Oh, I was right. Medium the chin, well as the forehead because it's hard. And the tip of your nose is right soft, so it's rare. So smart. Only forty-two. I'm smarter than forty-two percent of the people who did, or the whatever the remainder is, sixty-eight percent. Um, Chef's hat. Uh, yeah, used to be in. They used to hide in monasteries. Well, there you go, people. I'm a B plus. You got eight out of ten, or eighty. Yeah. Well, that's not bad. Not bad. I'll take it for what it was, since I didn't know half of those. And of course, you helped me with that because I guessed on most of those. Thank you very much. This has been a great, fun live stream. I appreciate everyone who's jumped on, uh, who's participated in the chat. Thanks for bringing up the controversy of the gas uh, being banned. I'm definitely going to check into that for sure and see if I can make some content of that. Do a little bit of research. That's really good good content. Make sure that you do hit the thumbs up before you leave if you haven't and hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate it if you like my content. We'll be back next Wednesday with more content, more live stream chat. And um, I really uh, enjoy my Wednesday night hanging out with you guys uh, or Thursday morning, depending on where you're at. Uh, so, but I really do appreciate you guys jumping on and being a uh, part of this uh, with me. It's uh, it's really awesome. So have an awesome, blessed week. We'll see you uh, very soon, hopefully. And um, until then, 